Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment... Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, the thrilling drama of murder and mystery and the people who walk the great white way with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Time comes finally to Broadway when the emptiness is big, when solitude walks the street, arrogant and brave. It's the time when the neon carnival is wound down, when the blazing furnace of light darkens and grows cold. And on the pavements, glistening with the tears of despair, the stragglers walk. They plead for a door to open, for a light to be turned on. Solitude is at their heels. Please, kid, for a friend. But it's no good, kid. Broadway's closed for the night. But there are side streets where it's never closed, where trumpets scream and saxes weep. In the 50s, for instance, in a little joint called the 34 Club, for instance, where I was, where death was. And this time it was a circular platform raised above the bar with a piano on it, and a dead man resting his head on the keys, and all of it defined in the darkness by a spotlight that changed colors, and all of it revolving like a big toy, slow, round and round. And the man tries to explain to you why it wasn't turned off. It isn't that we were sitting here enjoying the spectacle of it, Mr. Clover. It's just that in cases of murder, I read someplace you're not supposed to touch nothing, but nothing. It was going around like that when... Before, during, and after the murder. Hey, you got yourself a puzzle. How to figure out from where the shot came from with that platform going round and round and round. Turn it off. I'm glad somebody finally came through with an order. There. I'm a man who doesn't function very well, Mr. Clover, unless somebody gives me an order. Spineless, that's me. Still, you manage this place, Mr. Darby. You own it, too, huh? Sure, but what courage does that take? The decisions are made by Kay. She hires the musicians, pays the salaries. That's my wife, Kay. You ever heard her sing, Mr. Clover? Like a dream you don't talk about to nobody. She hired the man up there? Absolutely. Heard him playing piano in some forlorn joint. Hired him on the spot. He was very great, that boy on the piano. What else about him, Mr. Darby? What else about Harry Brett? He's dead with a bullet hole in him. Maybe you can tell me why. Maybe I can. Want to hear, Mr. Clover? Uh Uh-huh. I got a good why. Harry Brett was singing siren songs into the ear of my wife, Kay. That could be motive, couldn't it? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. It could. Did your wife listen? My wife, Kay? You... You won't mind asking her yourself. You won't mind at all. Now tell me how it happened. I wish I could, Mr. Clover, but but I just can't. Try. Oh, it's no use. Because I was out on the sidewalk at the time, communing with something or someone. It has no name, this something? No. But I can give you a list of witnesses on the street who witnessed me communing. They know the look that comes over me. That's how they know. You want the list? Yeah, but later. You'll stick around so you can give it to me later. I got no place else to go. Just no place. Who can tell me how it happened? Jack over there. Jack Gage, the boy sitting at the bar crying because his friend is dead. He's sorry the pianist is dead. Sure. Somebody has to play a dirge at a funeral, don't they, Mr. Clover? Don't they? Harry. Harry, you were too good to die, kid. Too good. Mr. Gage, I'll have to ask you some questions from the police. You have to? Tell me what happened. We were on the platform up there, 
Turning round and round, playing good. Harry was playing so good at her chin side. I still hear it, and it still hurts. Just you and Harry were up there? Me on clarinet and Harry on piano and the trumpet. The trumpet? Charlie Walker. Charlie the trumpet and I the clarinet were out. Harry took it away from us. Nobody could play against what he was doing. It was... It hurt. That's when he was shot? Yeah, there was a shot. At first I thought it was a drum, but then I knew it wasn't a drum because there's no drum in the number. The drum's out with the rum. Who talks about me? Who talks about me when my back is turned? Out of my way. It's burning. I gotta put it Take out. Take a minute. Who are you? You don't know. Ray Richard. I beat out heartbeats for the people on the drums. What are you, an agent? Hey, Jack. Why the tears without tears? Oh, go die. Beat out your own march and go die. I'll do that. It was burning me up and I didn't know what. A death march, that's what's inside me. A jazz time death march. Hey, who died beside me? Harry Brett. He was murdered. I gotta play him into the other world. I gotta... Hey, you kill him, Jack? You kill him because you love him so much? Oh, that dirty rotten... Leave him alone, Jack. He's drunk. That don't give him the right. Listen to him play. Listen to that crazy, crazy man. You haven't told me yet how it was, Jack. Huh? Oh, about Harry? Well, there was this shot. And Harry goes, oh, like that, oh. And he puts his head on the keys and dies. And nobody cares. Everybody runs away. Harry dies and they run away. Where did they run? Where did who run? Be specific. It's the time to be specific. The trumpet. Charlie Walker. Who knows? Kay Darby. To her apartment, I bet. Right down the street, number 16. Call on her. Tell her I sent you. Tell her that. Yeah? What? Kay Darby live here? You're who? Danny Clover, police. All right. You'll be in the way, but all right. I was told I'd be able to find Kay Darby here. Who can find Kay Darby? Guys like you? People who come knocking on a door? Ask me about Kay Darby. I'll try to translate her to you. Let's not bother, huh? Where is she? That's a little late, isn't it? 3.30 in the A and the M? In the next room? Get her. If so, say you. But only because you got a badge tucked away. Kay? Visitor, Kay. Man from the police, Kay. He wants to find you. I'm Danny Clover. There's some things I want to ask you. Yes? About uh, Harry Brett. Ah. Uh, Don't mind him, Mr. Clover. Charlie here thinks anyone who doesn't play a trumpet might as well be making music with a comb and tissue paper. You feel that way, huh, Charlie? Charlie who? Hey, what's the matter with you, Mr. Clover? Been away from the world for six years? I'm Charlie Walker. Charlie blows a trumpet. And you sing. Uh, isn't that right, Kay? That's right. Why did you leave the 34 Club after the shooting? I was upset. She was upset. Leaned on old Charlie Walker for strength in time of need. You came here with Charlie? Yeah. I left word about leaving. Seeing Harry dead, I knew what would happen if I stayed. Oh? What? I'd want to keep looking at him lying there. I wanted to see him... What's the matter? Just that I left word that I'd be here with Charlie... So if the police wanted to question us, we'd be here. What can you tell me about Harry? A lot. He could play the piano like an angel. His fingers touched my arm too much when we talked. I hated the sight of him. Does that take care of it? Where were you when Harry was shot? Sitting with me at the bar. That's right. Charlie. Ah, why a mess about a lousy piano player. You hated him too, huh? From the top of his toupee to tippy toes. He was egotistical, vain, selfish, snobbish. He loved himself. Another kind of guy, I mean. He had me there. And after that, a moth started to whir around the light bulb. We all saw it at the same time. We watched it. There was nothing more to say. Suddenly, we all got tired and wished everybody'd go away. I walked Charlie out to the street. He hailed his cab. I hailed mine. I went home and went to sleep. The next morning, I went through the motions. Get up and breakfast, and the morning papers propped against the sugar bowl and to, to work. Check in at headquarters and let them know you're calling on Ray Richard, drummer. 
because when you saw Ray Richard a little while ago, he wasn't in condition to talk about murder. Maybe the morning would change it all. When I got to his door, Ray's hymn to the sun had a feathery quality to it. Ray looked better. Hi. Come on in. Thanks. Did I interrupt? No. Sit down. Me too. I'm woozy. I'm really woozy. Almost knocking over my drums. That was quite an outfit of drums you got there. Uh-huh. I heard you play a little bit last night. Interesting. Interesting? Why was it interesting? I don't know. I... I'm grateful you remember me because of my drums. Just that it was strange. A man gets killed and you react by... By doing this? that? Uh-huh. For Harry Brett, pianist, his phrase for his dying. See, I'm lucky. Lucky? And yeah, people, things, I react to them. Everything has its tempo. I don't need words. I see. You? <laughs> you. A policeman. Look, Ray. Kay Darby. You know her? That's Kay, exactly her. What about yourself? Me. Yeah, now it works out. End of show. Not really that, Ray. I'm trying to find out whether you killed Harry Brett. Not me. You're wrong about that. I mourned for him. Yeah, I heard. When you left the club. Later, after that, I took a walk. A skid row type walk. Because the night and the thing that happened to Harry needed that. You can't leave death quickly. You can't have it touch you and go home and forget it. Ray. You got to do it gently, so I went back to the dying and the half alive. And I came home and tried to hold the feel of it, the tempo of it, with my drums. And I could let it go, but I couldn't work that out either. I was trying... When I came up here? Yeah. Where were you when Harry was killed? <laughs> I can't give you addresses. What do you mean? I had a half-hour break from the bandstand, boozed it up, and a couple of joints around. Why didn't you stay at the 34 Club? They got a liquor license. It's enough to play there. I don't have to live my half-hour breaks there. Are you glad Harry's dead? Doesn't make any difference. I'll hire another piano player. Did you kill him? No. I'd be afraid to kill. You've got a tempo for that, too? <laughs> yeah, I have. Would you like to hear it? Not now, Ray. But stick around your drums in case the yen suddenly hits me. Come in, Tartaglia. Oh, thanks. The toughie, huh? Hmm? What is? This murder of this piano player. It isn't fair to the ballistics department how this murder of this piano player was performed. Oh, got them worried, huh? Yeah, indeed. This guy getting shot on a revolving stage. How are they supposed to find out where the shot came from? Toughie, huh? You took the words out of my mouth. The shot could have come from any place. The line of the bullet being a secant to a revolving circle whose formula is pi r squared to the nth power. Oh? Uh, uh, will you excuse me? Well, that goes without saying. Thank you. You're welcome, I'm sure. Danny Clover speaking. I told you I was afraid, Mr. Clover. Who is this? Ray. Ray Richard. Please. The I... drummer? Of course. Of course it is. What's the matter with you? A guy's been hanging around out front. What guy? What are you trying to say? I just saw him come into the house. Listen. I don't hear anything. Ray. No. Ray. Ray, what is it? The shots and the scream held the tight blend of terror. And I rode it, followed it behind the siren, gouging a channel through the streets. It took six minutes to get to Ray's room. The room was empty. No Ray, nothing. Correction. The room was flooded with music coming from a phonograph. That and a streak of blood on the rug, lending its own touch to the shrieking room. But most of all, it was the music. A record. I looked at it. Tempo for tempani, it was called. The room didn't need it. It needed another quality. The quality that came after violence. The tempo of silence, maybe. Of death. 
And wherever Ray Richard was right now, I had a feeling he was covered with it. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. We now continue with Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway's a place that can get excited about a lot of things. Joe Lewis and war coming out of retirement. The terrible Turk pinned the referee at St. Nicholas Arena. And up in Central Park, Robert the Rhinoceros had twins and had his name changed to Alice. Broadway stands in front of the Paramount Building and gawks at the Translux. I didn't have it so good. Reason? A pianist named Harry Brett was shot on a revolving stage in a nightclub. Reason? A trap drum player named Ray Richard had left testimony of death in his room. Reason? I had to go to work. I called headquarters, had an all-points bulletin sent out on Ray Richard. Let them know I was on my way back to the 34 Club. In the early afternoon, the place was bleak, without reason, pointless. Like an old false face that hung on a dime store shelf for too many Halloweens. Kay Darby was sitting at the bar making a pattern of wet stains with the bottom of her glass. When she saw me, she looked as if she wished I'd never happened. Oh, not again, Mr. Clover. Why not? Many's the time I meet someone and say to myself, oh, not again. And you're telling yourself that now, huh? Sit down if you want. I only make the offer because sometimes breeding gets the better of me. Maybe I should tell you, Kayla. Don't tell me. You want me to shiver when you point your finger at me and say I'm a suspect for murder. Save it. I wouldn't even shrug. Did you kill Harry? Uh Uh-uh. Nope. Nah. Nope. Look, you don't understand, do you? Understand what? About me. I'm trying to get it over to you. I'm being in a dull gray mist. I was getting ready to salt my beer with a tear when you walked in. Oh? Yep. This whole thing that's killing is going to break Lou to the nub. Lou, your husband. Oh, you mean the publicity? And he was just getting this little gin mill afloat. Now... Tell me this, Kay. How close were you with Ray Richard? Drummer boy Ray? That's right. What would I want with him? You tell me. He's talented. I know. Once I was with him where people drink out of glass thimbles and listen to violin music. He beat out for my amusement a rhythm with the fiddle with pickle forks. What about Ray? He's missing. Maybe... Wait a minute, the bar phone. Yes? Yes, he's here. Someone from your side of the tracks wants to talk to Mr. Clover. Thanks. Hello? Danny? We got Richard, Danny. Found him. Hold him, Gino. I'll be right down. Go by way of the East River docks, Danny. That's where they fished him out. Drowned. Dead. At the docks, the heat clawed at the mounted policemen, at their horses, and they in turn clawed at the crowd, the crowd with the pale, sullen face, rejecting the heat, the stain of heat on its body and its clothes, dodging, scurrying from under the hooves of the rearing, sweating animals. Because the spectacle of death was for free, and the crowd would not be denied by man or beast or element. And from the river, the vapors of night were beginning to rise in the distant moan of a ship as it entered into the horizons of night. And death had shaped itself a proper setting. And someone known to you moved across it, pushed his way through the supernumerary spouncher, spoke to you. Yeah, come on, Danny, I'll get through the crowd. Where is he, Mugovan? Down at the edge of the dock. The boys have fished him out, laid him out in one of the machine sheds. All right, one side, one side, please. Oh, will you please step aside? Stand here, Danny. Here, I'll uncover him. Oh, yeah, they shot him up good from up close. 
and threw him in the river. How long did you say he'd been in the river? Oh, not long, Danny. Just long enough to... There's no blood on him. Yeah. Identification? Yeah. It's Musicians Union card, local 802, issued to Ray Richard. And a driver's license issued to Ray Richard. And this check from the 34 Club signed by Kay Darby made out to Ray Richard. Description tallies. And this gold Longine watch, Danny, with the initials RR on the back. That spells Ray Richard, huh? Yeah, I remember it. Do something for me, Muggerman. Oh, sure, Danny. Call headquarters. Have them pick up Lou and Kay Darby. And a trumpet. Huh? A trumpet named Charlie Walker. Next time you invite a trumpet player, Danny, pick a spot with better acoustics. This offends the ear, this hole. Listen how it echoes. Hey! See what I mean? Uh-huh. Reminds me of a dance crib I played once in Selma, all of BMI. Same acoustics. Same type of studio response. I was playing the trumpet in a manner unknown to this world. And those yokels just lay there, like these stiffs. Stop it, Charlie. You're disgusting. What's the matter, Lou? You develop a set of taste all of a sudden? No. Just that with all these dead around me, it gives me the feeling I should commune with something. Why did you bring Charlie and me here, Mr. Clover? I want you to identify a body we found in the East River. Someone we have pleased, or vice versa? That's a good question. Take all the time you need. I want you to be sure. Now, the shape is familiar, but the face, it's hard to tell. Mr. Darby? I recognize the suit. Uh-huh. I recognize it. Uh-huh. You know who it is? Of course, don't you? I've seen him wear it many times. Therefore, the body belongs to... to, uh... Ray Richard? Of course, Ray Richard. I only hesitated because a man doesn't rush into a thing like this. What do you say, Charlie? Ray Richard. Recognize this ring? Hmm. Of course I do, Mr. Clover. That's Ray's, all right. He pawned it with me many times when he needed more money for more booze. All right. That's all. He was murdered, huh? Uh Uh-huh, Charlie. What makes Lou and me your darlings? Other people could have killed Ray, tossed him in the water. Like who, Charlie? Like the clarinet Jack Gage. Like Kay, the Song of Songs. By the way, Mr. Darby, where's Kay? I've been waiting for you to tell me why she isn't here. She... she was at the club the last time I saw her. Why? She's not there anymore. Upstairs, they say she's not anywhere. Where is she, Mr. Darby? You mean Kay's disappeared? You mean you can't find her? You gotta find her. I'm nothing without Kay. You got a finder, you hear? I hear. And we will, Mr. Darby. Honest, we will. Attention, all cars. Attention, all cars. 9.33 p.m. Pick up Kay Darby. She's five feet, four inches tall. Weight about 121. She has black hair, dark brown eyes. Danny Clover speaking. You fellas looking for Kay Darby? Who is this? Gee Brooks. I run the Kit Kat in Harlem. She's here now. Hold her there. You come get her. You're late. She's gone. She's a long time gone. Where'd she go? She said she wanted to wear the music with real secret. I told her where. Where? Brick Wall Club, Lenox Avenue. Kay Darby. Uh, she been in here? Been left. Where'd she go? I know. There's a great piano around the corner, maybe there. I said Kay Darby. Not here now. Was, but not now. You know where she went? Yeah, I know. All right, where? What she was looking for? Where? Room upstairs. All the way upstairs. As far as you can go. One room on the last floor. Try it. Before me in the corridor, blocking the open door. Her eyes closed, head moving back and forth to the rhythm of her wordless song. The music that came from the room in back of her drain yeah, yeah. touched her, flowed over her. What do you want here? 
You found him, huh? Okay. He won't let me in. He and the other two. Uh Uh-huh. They're worshipping something in there. They won't let anybody in. But I'll wait. Get out of the way, Kay. No. Get out of the way. You two. Out. Hello, Ray. Hi. Hi, Mr. Clover. We've been looking for you, Ray. That's funny. I didn't think you would be. You made a mistake, Ray. Me? Uh Uh-huh. Man shot up like that. So little blood in your room. A mistake. (laughs) Who was he? Nothing. I looked for a man who was nothing. I found him. On that walk you took in Skid Row. Yeah, that's when. A derelict of the same size and build. You switch clothes with him, watch, ring, kill him, and throw him in the river with your identification. Yeah. And didn't fool you, huh? That leaves the pianist, Harry Brett. Did he need killing, too, Ray? Uh Uh-huh. Kay hated him. He bothered her. I like Kay around me. She likes it, too. Loves it. Let's go. Loves it. Loves it. I didn't stop it, Ray's frenzy. The girl stood in the doorway watching him. In a little while, she came into the room and sat at his feet. Then it was over. All over. Time leaps down on Broadway. The revelers swarm the streets to embrace it. Laughter pours into the shadowed places. And for a time, kid, no despair. Just explosions and the sweet promise and and have a drink on me. For a time. For a little time. It's Broadway. The gaudiest. The most violent. The lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some healthful, refreshing Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's story and that you're enjoying Wrigley Spearmint gum every day. We invite you to join us next week at the same time when Detective Danny Clover returns again with Broadway's My Beat. Broadway's My Beat, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Gum, is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed and conducted by Alexander Curry. The program is written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin and stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This has been a RadioClassics.com presentation. Programs are copyright their respective owners. All rights reserved.